Good evening. Tonight we have five strange and chilling encounters from the truth as here subreddit. Before we begin, I want to apologise for the lack of frequent uploads to the channel this year. I have many interesting video ideas but faced with a lack of time to produce and make such videos with having a lot of work going on at university as well as my full time job. If you would like to support me on my Patreon, the link will be on screen now as well as at the description for those that wish. I will put all Patreons past and present on my about page on my channel here. Anyway, without further ado, the truth is here. So let's begin. Number 1 Two weeks ago my little dog Max died. He was diagnosed with an illness a few months ago with an uncertain prognosis, but I could tell the end was coming. My best friend was going to pick me up at 9am on Friday morning and I was going to have to put him to sleep as his illness was progressing and his quality of life had declined severely. However, the night before we were going to take him, he passed in his sleep, which I thought was a blessing. He was in his bed right beside me. Me and my two best friends had a nice little funeral service in my backyard that evening where we buried him and told silly stories about our little buddy. The whole thing was bittersweet. We shed a lot of tears but we also had champagne and talked about his little sassy yappy self. Two nights after Max's death, me and my young daughter were in the kitchen playing pretend lemonade stand. She was standing and I was sitting on the floor. When I pushed up off the floor and twisted around to get up, I saw a 3D, grey, almost opaque but just so slightly transparent version of Max. He walked from behind the kitchen island and walked right up to the kitchen door that leads to the back porch and just kind of slowly faded through it. There were no defining features such as nose, eyes or mouth, but the body shape, head shape, ear shape and gait were a complete giveaway that it was Max. He's been mine for 11 years so I know his body and his walk as good as my own. I was pretty jarred but I wrote it off quickly as my grieving brain playing tricks on me until my three year old looked up at me and said, Mama, was the black shadow Max? How did he go through the door? I was gobsmacked. If it weren't for the fact I had seen him myself, I wouldn't have given it much thought. But the fact that my toddler saw him too makes me think that my brain was not playing tricks on me. I still feel so weird about it. My toddler thinks it was the coolest thing ever and won't stop talking about it. Although now she is confused because I reiterated to her a dozen times, in an age appropriate way, that Max was not coming back after we buried him. Now she keeps saying I lied to her. Number 2 When I was in 6th grade there was this girl at school. I uh, will call her Nellie. She was the popular girl and had a million friends and tons of boys that liked her. There was something about her that just wasn't quite right. She had this weird influence over everyone, including the adults and teachers. She was way too aware for her age and knew how to get around things and manipulate people that were older than her. She seemed to know how to legitimately read minds as well. I remember once thinking a specific thought while walking close to her and she responded aloud to what I was thinking as if I had actually said something and I know for a fact that I didn't. I remember I was so shocked I just stood there in awe, not knowing what to say. She definitely had some strange psychic abilities and could force people to do things against their will just by thinking about it. She had the most amazing luck I've ever seen in anyone. She got whatever she wanted no matter how unlikely and she seemed to draw lucky away from everyone else. All her close friends and people she spent time with had terrible issues. Two of her best friends' mums got cancer and one died. Another broke her foot and similar things happened to her other friends. For the brief time I was her friend, I had two infections. Once in my eye after she complimented my new coloured contacts and one in my ear after noticing my new earrings. I remember she was very beautiful but her older brother was very unattractive and appeared almost to have stunted growth. They were close and spent a lot of time together. 
I remember one instance when she got something she wanted that was very improbable. A speaker came to her school and was going to give away a special prize to one of the 3,000 kids at her school. We were all in the library waiting to hear who would win. I was watching Nellie and I saw her with this weird expression on her face, like she was concentrating really hard. Immediately, the speaker drew a name from the hat and called her name. She had won. She didn't even look surprised when she went to collect her prize. It was very creepy and unnerving. She had this weird effect on people where even if you didn't like her, you wanted to do anything for her. I've never seen anything like it in my 17 years on this earth. I've met many popular kids and none like her. I have not seen her in nearly 7 years. We were only 11 at the time, but she was like an adult in our child's body. She knew everything that would happen and knew exactly what to say in order to make you do something for her. She did not seem entirely human to me, almost like she was something else, masquerading as a middle schooler. She had a deep, almost adult voice and she did not think like a child. I had first met her in fourth grade and even back then she was so incredibly advanced that she had an entourage of friends, boyfriends and other things that one doesn't normally have until middle or high school. She knew things in fourth grade about psychology, human nature that I did not learn until recently. I have never seen someone so adept at controlling and manipulating people at such a young age. Has anyone had a similar experience with people who don't seem quite totally human? Number 3 Seven years ago, I was working as a dishwasher at a local sports bar. I had just turned 18 and it was night before my high school graduation. I was supposed to hang out with some friends at night but ended up having to work after the other dishwasher called off sick. I didn't particularly mind, I needed the money. I didn't hate the job either, I actually enjoyed working in the kitchen. Anyways, towards the end of the night, my kitchen manager asked me if I could close the kitchen down. This usually meant having to stay until 1am-ish. Again, I didn't mind since I got paid by the hour. Here's the juicy part, but let me tee this up first. I was one of those workers that even on my work days never got angry or never kept a bad mood at work. But for whatever reason, at around midnight that night, I was overcome by the most intense anger I'd ever felt in some time. There was no explanation for it. I remember getting irrationally pissed off all of a sudden. I looked up the clock in the kitchen and it read 12.05. My kitchen manager noticed my attitude change and let me leave early, saying he would close the kitchen. The next morning I wake up and start to get ready for graduation. I put on some clothes and head downstairs. My grandmother was watching the news when I got downstairs and they were covering an awful car accident that happened the previous night. It was my three best friends that I was supposed to hang out with before I got called into work. The accident happened at 12.05am. All my friends were pronounced dead at the scene, the night before we were going to graduate. Number 4 I've read a lot of stories that relate to mine but not quite completely. But that I mean I was terrorised for a whole night rather than it being a brief experience. Before I start, English isn't my forte and I'm not a master storyteller, but I will try. This happened a long time ago and was one of the first encounters I've had. I was 9 years old, staying with my grandma on a reservation. I'm Native American. I was only supposed to be there for a day but then it started to storm badly, lasting nearly 4 days. To this day, one of the worst storms we've had. The power was cut for maybe three days, so no lights, no stove, nothing. The layout of my grandma's house is pretty important. I, I don't think you would even call it a house. It was like a trailer house, the kind you see in trailer park boys. It must have been the third night because the day after we ate boiled eggs, my cousin, my aunt and I were all sleeping in the living room and from where I was sleeping you could see through the kitchen window was pretty small, maybe 2x4. I was woken up by the sound of something talking in a strange voice. At the time I couldn't think of what it reminded me of but now after thinking about it for years, it sounded like a goat trying to speak English. I still don't know what it was trying to say but I heard, 
Hey boys, hey, I just got chills typing that. At first I thought it was just my cousin being annoying, but then I noticed there was a big figure standing outside of the kitchen window that had its fist against the glass. And then I noticed it was banging on the window. Not hard enough to make a ton of noise though. I saw the outline of horns, similar to a big horned goat, fur covering its entire body. From what I could see, anyway, and then fucking lightning flashed and I saw its face. Very hard to describe, but it looked like that what you would imagine a goat man to look like. Maybe a bit more on the goat side, red eyes but not glowing. It looked old and rough. Its fur was mostly grey with some brown. The window that it was at was six feet above the ground, or possibly more, I don't quite remember, plus the trailer burned down a few years back, so I would say it was seven to seven and a half feet tall. Throughout the night, I stayed in place, but the banging turned to scratching, and the attempts to speak turned to growls and shouting. Lightning flashed a few times more, and every time I could see the anger on its face growing more and more. I eventually woke up my cousin crying. She came and laid with me until I fell asleep. I had a hard time falling asleep because every time I closed my eyes, I could see eyes looking back at me. And when I did finally fall asleep, I had a nightmare involving the goat man. In my dream, I watched him walk over to our neighbours and brutally murder them and come back with a decapitated head and swing around in my face. He was taunting me. But why? I still don't know, but what's weird is that my cousin said that she couldn't see it, but she could hear it. The growling, scratching, everything. We do still talk about it often. And I remember at one point moving to another room and looking outside of the window and seeing its full body, which was not like a mentor, but a centaur. It noticed me and that's when I ran back into the living room. Actually, I forgot to mention that the morning after, we checked outside for evidence and we found huge hoof prints going from window to window and scratch marks on the windows. The prints were probably the size of two open hands. Now, I've read countless stories here on Reddit and other sites, but none of them come close to this night. It was the most scary encounter I've had to this day and I've seen a lot of things. I saw a dog man and when I asked a medicine woman about it she said that it was just passing by and that it was angry because I was able to see it and it wasn't supposed to be seen. I shine a bright spotlight on it and yup it looked pretty damn mad. I, I feel crazy just thinking about it. Actually typing this I remembered something that happened around that time. Not to me but somebody who lived on the reserve. He was a known pedophile and one night got drunk and apparently saw a deer man. After that, they said he went crazy and killed himself. There have also been reports of goat men terrorising kids but on different reserves. They describe it to be a minotaur figure. Number 5 When I was 17, I got a job working for a major thrift store chain, a North Seattle location considered by many to be sketchy. The MO of this chain was to buy up old grocery stores or have other serviceable old buildings and open up stores. This building was, I believe, one of the old grocery stores of the area. It was tiny and very old. I had made a few friends while working there, most of whom I am still friends with today, and recently this was brought back up. It blows my mind I could have forgotten about it because it's the only actual tangible evidence I've ever seen with my own two eyes of real paranormal activity. So here's what went down. One night after everybody went home, the security alarm went off. That flagged the security company to send a police car and to inform the building owners, so on and so forth down the chain of command until it landed at my friend and at the time the store supervisor's feet. Since he lived within walking distance of the store, he was responsible for meeting with the patrol and verifying that the building was all clear. And it was. With that taken care of, everybody went back to their business. The next day, he obviously checked his security footage to see what might have set off the alarm. He actually called me and a few others into the office to show us the footage. Let me describe the layout for you a little so you can get a better mental image of this first. 
The front of the store was an entire wall of floor to ceiling windows with three doors, side entrance, front entrance and exit, and an emergency exit with a bag red handle that would trip the alarm if used. The register stood between that front wall and the racks of clothing, with each crack having a little and cap sign on a little metal post. If you've thrift shopped, but I'm sure you know what they look like, as it's pretty much the same in all thrift stores. The back park of the store, employees only area, had a bunch of racks of clothes waiting to be priced that sat there for the next morning. So, he shows us this CCTV footage. It's dark and empty, and nothing seems to happen for about a minute. Then, one of the end cap signs start to slowly spin. This I could easily write off as an event draft or something of some sort, but things started picking up. The CCTV would pan back and forth between the camera overlooking the front windows, registers and partial view of the racks, and end cap signs to the back of house area where we processed all donations. In the back, you could see the sleeve of a coat being lifted, as though it were pinched at the cuff and lifted above the collar before being dropped again, over and over. That could not be explained by a draft. Back to the front camera. The sign is now spinning extremely fast and the shifty cardboard signs they hang with fishing line from the ceiling are swaying like crazy, almost like an earthquake, and then the glass windows. They started actually, well, flexing, violently may I add. The red handle on the emergency exit door, a long metal bar almost as long as the actual door, at the front thrusted up and down while the whole door and surrounding windows looked like they were being wailed on by somebody or several somebodies. This is what set the alarm off. There was nobody there, the parking lot was visible through the glass. There was not a single person there. All the activity started very slowly and ramped up into a somewhat violent frenzy, and then just stopped, all within maybe a one to two minute span. So yeah, I have no proof and that is frustrating, and can think of no logical explanation for any of it. I'm absolutely floored I was even able to forget it, after I was shown that video, even if it was a better part of a decade ago. Thank you all for listening, especially if you made it as far as here. Please go check out the social media links in the description and the post of the original stories to give more credit to those who experienced these things first hand. And as always, I hope you have a spooky evening and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.